But before I get started, let me, let me just try to recap my story. In uh, March of 2002, I went into a diabetic coma. I was diagnosed with a specific condition known as a non-contotic hyperglycemic hyperosomolar coma. Now, <laughs> uh, when I came out of the coma, the doctor said, uh, Dwayne, we got some good news and we got some bad news. The good news is that you're alive. The bad news is ooh, we've got to remove your legs. So I don't know if anyone here has ever been in a coma, but when you come out of a coma, you don't really realize that you were in a coma. And when the doctor said remove the legs, I thought he meant, oh, move my legs to the other side of the bed. <laughs> and he said, no, Dwayne, remove. And uh, my daughter said, you mean cut off his legs? <laughs> uh, my daughter had flown in from Pittsburgh. And I said, cut off the legs? And the doctor said, yeah. And we'll save $250 if we, you know, we don't like to say cut or amputate. We like to say remove. And so I'm still a little groggy. And I said, okay, $250, I'll save $250. Is that per leg or is that for, <laughs> is that for both legs? <laughs> and my daughter is screaming, dad, it doesn't matter how much it costs. You're not going to remove my father's legs. And I was, uh, I was 80, about 80, 85 pounds heavier than I am right now, but I carried it well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I felt I was a little chunky. And my daughter said, no, Dad, you passed chunky 35 pounds ago. <laughs> now, <laughs> and again, because people say, Dwayne, you're a grown man. I said, yeah, but you don't understand, my mother, See, when I was growing up, my mother was a living legend. All the kids in the neighborhood, when my mother came running, they ran before I did. And I knew my mother was coming because you're on a ball field. If the people in the outfield start jumping over the fence, I knew that she was coming down the street. And my mother, she's not that big, but my mother could leap and rip a branch out of a tree. And you became part of that tree. <laughs> so when you grow up <laughs> with that type of experience, uh, you learn you don't say no to my mother, you go along with the program. And again, I thought I only had two or three weeks of this and she'll be going back home. Only uh, 326, which is still as high obviously, but it was over 100 points down from uh, the previous readings that I had following the hospital's diet plan. I was so excited. I said, whoa. I called the, the hospital. I called the doctor. Yeah, Dwayne, uh, yeah, that's an anomaly. I said, oh. Okay, it's an anomaly. Hmm. Okay, so what do engineers do when they face an anomaly? In the lab, uh, we test exactly. We test the hypothesis. I got one data point. And I felt I had nothing to lose because they still wanted to cut off my legs. And I decided, well, let me just try this Brussels sprouts again. Uh, yeah. And I tried it for lunch and after lunch and my blood glucose level dropped not 100 points, maybe about 55, 56 points. I went, whoa, I, I was excited. I called the doctor, got two data points. He goes, no, I ain't. Are you listening to me? I need you to understand something, Dwayne. You're in denial. <laughs> and most diabetics are in denial of their disease. And I'm trying to help you. Whatever you read, you did it incorrectly. Go back to the original program. And so when I got off the phone, my mother asked what the doctor say. Now, <laughs> I <laughs> wanted to stay alive. <laughs> so I said, yeah, Mom, well, the doctor said, yeah, just, you know, follow the program. I didn't tell her which program. And I felt, again, I had nothing to lose, and I, and I, I continued to eat the Brussels sprouts um, for the next seven days.
the first thing I thought about when I thought I was dead, my mother, she goes, did you think about me? I said, no. <laughs> did, did you think about your daughter? I said, no. She goes, and what did you think about? I said, well, what popped in my head for, for some strange reason was I won't have to pay the electric bill this month. <laughs> My mother just shook her head. I tested my blood sugar eight times a day. So I had 56 data points. And you're going to tell me all 56 data points are an anomaly? He goes, well, wait a minute, Dwayne. Who, uh, who authorized you to deviate from the program? And I said, my mother did. <laughs> The other thing I'll mention besides the nutritional part of the a wellness strategy, there, there are actually seven strategies, but I, I'm only going to talk about two. The other one I'm going to mention is exercise. Everybody knows that exercise is important. I hate exercise. I hate exercise. Anybody here raise your hand say you love exercise. I want somebody raise your hand. I want to talk to you. <laughs> I would say on average, I was probably at the beginning spending an extra two, three thousand dollars a month, maybe more now if I, if I go back and do the numbers on the, um, the insulin, because they did pay for some of it, but they wouldn't pay for all my test strips because I was testing my blood eight times a day they would only pay for three. Doesn't that tell you something? They don't want you to get well. But I learned how to play their game. Because in America, it's all about the money. So I told the test strip people, I love your test strips. But I'm going to pull them, little man. And they're so expensive. I'm going to use and buy these others, which cost a little less. You know what they did? They sent me some free test strips. <laughs> I said, oh, did the same thing with the other company. <laughs> and so today I'm going to try um, to take an eight-hour workshop <laughs> and try to hit some highlights during the next uh, uh, 30 minutes or so and maybe leave some time for some questions and answers. The original presentation that I developed several months ago was basically a slide presentation. And my daughter said, Dad, your slides are boring. You need some music. And I couldn't think of any music that would be appropriate <laughs> for uh, talking about diabetes. And, but the Superman theme uh, fits very well because part of my protocol addresses this, the Super Meal program. And so we're going to discuss some aspects uh, relative to that program, some of the biomarkers, and also, uh, again, the biology of the, the disease, diabetes. Because I had a little pamphlet. It was maybe five pages. But the question she had required me to develop a 75-page pamphlet. It, it was costing me too much money to print the pamphlet. <laughs> and then my mother said, son, write a book. And I laughed. And I said, yeah, right, Mom. And my daughter said, Dad, you should write a book. Yeah, and I laughed. But finally, uh, when I tried to convince my mother that I should not write the book because there are, all, there are all these other books written on diabetes, my mother just looked at me and she said, son, what did your father tell you when you were growing up? By the time you have come up with all these excuses and wasted all my time telling me why you can't do something, you could have already had it done. And again, I can't win that battle, people. <laughs> it was easier to write the book. <laughs> Information is very powerful. People with power do not want you to have power. Yeah.